in life when it feels like the whole world is against you are you going to give up or are you going to win Valet park in Denmark like I was Danish She want to vacate so I reservate on Uranus Draped in Versace, no it's purple label But if this was 96, we would shake in Foxy Spectators try to invade Share Let me see if you guys can see this Hold on one second Okay, so yeah, you guys can see it And my picture should be Alright, so let's get into it Up, he started writing them out in a different way, right? 30s now. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on. How you doing today, Mr. Millionaire Bachelor Guy? I'm great, Andrew. How are you? Just living the dream. So I don't really know what the backstory is. I got a message that uh, you were definitely a guy you should be talking to. Um, maybe you can kind of briefly tell me why that is, because I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't know. Um, why you should be talking to me, but I'll tell you my backstory. Um, basically, sure. I am a millionaire, young thirties, um, and I come yeah. from humble beginnings. If you don't, if you don't mind, I don't, and I don't mean to cut you off. I want your whole backstory, but if I if I stop you uh, systematically, it's just so I can get clarification on 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 something. That's all. Of course. Um, do you mind if I ask how you became a millionaire? Uh, real estate. So uh, I started in Philadelphia. I started out with a property that was, you know. Pretty modest, about $168,000. Purchased it with a first time home buyer, 3% down, wasn't a lot. Also went to them for homeowner, uh, what is it, seller's assist. So they gave me another extra 3%. So all out of pocket, probably like $7,000 to get that house that was about $168,000. About two years later, it appreciated for about $388,000. Um, I was working within the healthcare industry, healthcare finance, and I knew nothing about real estate. I go online. And I said, hey, I have one house. I want two. And the first thing that popped up was equity. So I, I read these Zillow threads that told me how to pull out equity. I'm making $50,000 at the time. I'm not making shit. Well, at the time, it was a little bit. But anyway, I call my bank and I say, hey, you know what? I'm looking at getting some equity. And they said, okay, how much would you like? I said, well, you know what? How much could I get? I was like a, a child in a, in a fucking suit. You called the bank like, to well, ask them for equity? What'd you say? You called the bank to ask them for equity? Yeah, because you, you need a line, uh, um, either a home equity line of credit or a home equity loan. Okay, so you called them to get credit. Well, either credit or a loan, but this one actually turned out to be a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so, um, it, but you, you, mind you, at the time, I didn't know any of this. So I'm just calling the bank randomly asking them for yeah, just as, as crazy as it might sound. Yeah, I said, hey, I, I want to pull out equity for my home. And they said, okay, cool. You well, I mean, that's pretty for... common though, right? People pull equity out of their homes all the time. Yeah, but I was at the time, I was like 22. So I knew nothing. I was like okay. a punk. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my early 30s now. Um, but anyway, they told me, hey, yeah, you, you qualify for 99.5. So 99,500. Now, me, I almost pissed my pants because I, I'm probably at 50000 salary. I wouldn't have see, seen that for, what, four years, four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, pulled that money out, bought my second property. Uh, and that's when Airbnb was pretty big. So what I did then was all the single family homes that I had, I split them into three. So just three different compartments. Uh, an example would be if I bought a home, it had two exits. The back of the house I would have as a separate unit from the, you know, the top house. The, well, the other portion of the house. And what that allowed me to do was start buying homes at the single family price, but also getting revenue or cash flow um, of a triplex or in some cases, quadruplex. Uh, I did that for a long time. Then I converted into- And he turned them all into Airbnbs? Uh, majority of them at the time. Okay. Um, at the time I started small because obviously I, I hadn't, you know, I'm coming from no money. Now, obviously, and, obviously you don't want to dox yourself, but can you tell me like kind of the general area where this occurred? Well, yeah, I've already said it a million times. Uh, Philadelphia, uh, I started in Philadelphia, then I expanded to Washington, D.C., and my current home is New York City. So, okay, gotcha. But by the time I got to New York, I converted all the properties back to their original use because uh, Airbnb was kind of dying at the time. And I had made so much cash flow that I didn't need Airbnb anymore. 
because you know running an Airbnb service is not just about the Airbnb; it's also about the uh, the staff that you have. You know, in terms of your cleaners, stockers, and there's a whole lot that goes into it. And it became a point where it made more sense to just you know cash flow on long you know long term uh, <laughs> you know, long term leases. Okay, so I, I think I understand. Um, so you made uh, your your millions or million or however much you have in uh, essentially renting out properties via Airbnb. When that dried up, you started renting them out in a different way, right? Yeah, mi mixed portfolio. So I've always always kept it mixed. Um, so essentially, uh, you know, what he's trying to do is he's trying to poke holes in Millionaire Bachelor. And the reality is you can never poke holes in Millionaire Bachelor because I, I literally am who I say I am. And that's why I'm able to talk about real estate in such a, you know, at such a high level, because everything that I've done in real estate is literally, in my personal opinion, it's fucking common sense. Um, so as you see through the, throughout this interview, he's trying to poke holes in you know, everything that's going on. And this is no shot to Andrew. This is just how the internet operates. They operate where you know, they, they want to find something wrong with what you're saying to kind of validate who you are. Um, but the thing that people don't understand is Millionaire Bachelor answers to nobody. I don't answer to anybody. You know, it is you know, three o'clock. I don't have a job. I'm just live streaming. I can do this every single day. I can live stream for 24 fucking hours. Actually, I think I might do that one day. I can, you know, I can do this because I don't have these, these type of, uh, uh, I can't, I don't have these fucking type of jobs where these people have, I work for myself. This is literally, you see the nighttime, you see the nighttime of the garden and you see the daytime of the garden. Look at how many trees are outside in the garden. This is Manhattan. This is Manhattan. That's that's fucking huge. That's a big deal. And we get into it in a little bit. But, you know, you cannot poke holes in an individual that came from nothing and that is currently a millionaire. Because at the end of the day, I answer to nobody. So all of these boxes that people are trying to put me into, I don't listen to it. I don't listen to it because it, what got me here was not listening to any of this. And majority of these individuals, they do not have as much money as me. They might have more subscribers to, than me. You have clout. I have real life happiness. That is the difference between me and all of these other people. I have real life happiness. And I can tell somebody how to make money from the bottom to the fucking top. And none of these people can tell you that because none of these people have money. Millionaire Bachelor has fucking money. And I made it. I made it the honest way. I didn't have to sell any drugs. I didn't have to rob anybody. I didn't have to shoot anybody. I had to do shit. Only thing I did was put my mind to the shit. And I did it. I started out with only $7,000. For my first time home buyer, 3.5% down on a $168,000 home. Do the math. Do the math. Let's get back into it. Mix. So the the first couple of years, it was all Airbnbs. It's about three properties. But as I kept continuing going on, I started buying uh, duplexes, triplexes. Well, not duplexes. I already had that, but triplexes, quadruplexes. Uh, so then it was I was balancing the portfolio. But it got to a point where um, Airbnb was just no longer efficient. You know. If you have that that much expense and you're not making that much revenue, then it just kind of doesn't make any sense to do Airbnb anymore. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of people make tons of money on Airbnbs and property rentals and that type of thing. Um, so I, I I was just curious on that point. Moving sure. moving forward from that point, can I ask a couple of questions? The of first course. question is, why are you wearing a mask? Um, I'm wearing a mask, um, and obviously you don't know my story, so let me explain a little bit. Um, Outside of doing the real estate, I'm also an artist um, as well. Um, I paint giant murals all over the hottest spots in Brooklyn, Philadelphia, and D.C. So, and I also drive some some pretty noticeable car, cars, 911s, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Um, I kind of stepped away from that in the last couple of years because of the attention um, that it garnered and the fame. You know, I, I was taught a lesson that, you know, not all fame is good fame, you know having somebody know who exactly who you are and you're walking down the street and they know you and you don't know them. It's not necessarily. the. And here's the thing. Majority of these individuals cannot fathom why I don't want fame. 
They can't fathom why I don't want fame because they've never had money. They've never had money and they've never had notoriety outside of outside of YouTube and they had notoriety in, in person. You, you will have somebody that fucking tries to kill you based on thinking that they can get something out of you. There's people out here that will that will do that and, and harm you just because they're fucking jealous. These people don't understand the life of an individual that drives around in the hottest cars, flies in helicopters, does the craziest outlandish shit. You're inside of a city where people are on top of each other. You're in Manhattan when people are on top of each other. People are on top of each other. And you want me to sit up there and tell you, take this mask off and tell you who I am? Are you fucking insane? This lets me know that this individual does not understand fame and the repercussions that can happen from having fame. You can, you can be politically targeted. Any of the buildings that I have. If I, and I, I have showed you guys some of the pictures of the, uh, you know, of the buildings that I have. And you can literally, and I'm not telling you guys to do this, don't fucking do this, but you can literally put that picture inside of Google and my house will probably fucking pop the fuck up. You know how dangerous that is? If I'm saying something that's not politically in line with what the system wants, do you know that my buildings could be targeted? I can be fined? They can come and find shit that's wrong with my property? Or properties? So these people are in over their head. They're in over their head because they don't understand the repercussions from making yourself a known entity. And I don't want fame. I don't need the pussy. If I wanted, if I just wanted to fuck all of these bitches and get all of this pussy, what I would do is I would take this mask off. Because then I would, I, my shit would be flooded by women. Because I'm an attractive guy. I'm tall, attractive guy. But I'm telling everybody I don't want that. And I do not fit inside any of anybody else's boxes and I never will. Ever, because Andrew does not come from the area that I come from. He does not. Andrew could not walk through the area that I come from. They would have robbed him a long time ago. Let's keep continue. The best thing. Um, so I think. But I mean, if you're that recognizable, you're not using a voice changer. I'm not using the voice changer. Yeah, I know. But that's my point. If you were that recognizable, wouldn't you, wouldn't people be able to recognize you just by your voice? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. I mean, I, I think in, in my instance, it was, I mean, I own some pretty landmark buildings. And um, when you're driving around in certain cars and being as young as I am, um, you, you, you kind of get an a audience or a crowd. Um, and yeah, I, that's, I, my, that's my point, though. If you have an audience or crowd or hangar. Oh, and one other thing. Everybody that joined the chat, don't worry. We're gonna read the um, we're gonna read the chats off after we get done looking at this interview. So everybody, continue to, to write your chats. Don't worry about it. Um, it's free, one hundred percent free. You can write your chat. I'm gonna read everybody's chats off. I'm gonna salute everybody that joined. But I just really wanted to get into this content right now. on or people who are around you, which is very common for millionaires. Wouldn't sure. they be able to just know who you were by your voice? No, I don't. I mean, I don't, nobody's ever. Yeah, no, nobody's ever said, "Hey, yo, are you on? Are you on YouTube?" <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, if the point, well, then what would be the point of the mask anyway? Well, the mask is just to hide my identity. You know, like I said, I, I, I really shy away from fame. I, I just don't want the fame. I don't. Well, you want can realize the skepticism of people if you say that you're a millionaire bachelor and you have sure. uh, these various opinions. And yet you won't show your face. You can understand the pe why people would be distrustful of that because they would think perhaps if you did uh, have your face out there, people could see it, that they could then check out the story and see if it's. So what Andrew doesn't understand is I don't give a fuck. I'm not making any money from this. I'm fucking I'm, I'm live streaming because I want to. I'm doing all of this shit because I want to. Do you think I give a fuck about somebody else's opinion? When, when a person comes and they pay for my, my $3,000 camera, my $3,000 laptop, all of the sound equipment, my, my goddamn lights, when they pay for all of that shit, that's when I, I might start caring. And that's what he doesn't understand because he's never seen a person that got on YouTube that doesn't give a fuck about fame.
It's it's beyond these people's comprehension. I am so real. The con my concept and my material is beyond all of these people's comprehension. I don't give a fuck about being famous. I am famous. I am internally peaceful. I can drive any car I want to. I can sleep with any woman I want to. I can, I can stay inside of my house for a year and be fully sustained. I have everything that I need here. I have about two, two years worth of food. I never have to leave my fucking house. So that's what he doesn't understand, that I'm not getting into YouTube for the money. I'm not getting into YouTube for the fame. Honestly, this is a fucking personal vendetta. This is a personal vendetta because I was once the guy who had nothing. And when I had nothing, I went to YouTube and I went to Google to find out what the fuck was going on in the world. And I got some valuable lessons on here. So this is my contribution back to the fucking world. Will I eventually make money on here? Probably. Why not? My time isn't free. Am I charging right now? Absolutely not. Nobody's paying me a fucking dime. But if you want to pay, pay, you know, if you want to send money, listen, it is what it is. Again, I just told you two, literally two pieces of equipment that cost me over three, over uh, $6,000. Just two pieces of equipment that I specifically bought for live streaming. And these motherfuckers want me to operate in the red. But I, Again, it's a personal vendetta. That's why I'm not charging you guys because I want these motherfuckers to know that I came into the game with money. I came into this fucking space with money. So you can't understand me. You can't understand why I don't give a fuck what anybody else says. When I was five years old, I saw somebody shot in the fucking head in front of my face. You think I give a fuck about anybody else's opinions? I survived the fucking jungle with gorillas and warlords. Andrew, you couldn't walk a, a block in the area that I'm from. A block, one block. You could not walk there. I did that shit every day. And I made it out of there. I grew up in a fucking war zone. And I became one of the motherfuckers in the area that you didn't fuck with. So no, this shit is different. I don't subscribe to your ideas and I never will. Do I have respect for Andrew and the Crucible? Yes, I do. Because as a business, I understand that what Andrew is doing in his work ethic is actually pretty fucking cool. But when it comes down to telling Millionaire Bachelor what he should and should not do, fuck no. You don't come from where I come from. You couldn't come from where I come from. You can't even stand at where I'm at right now. And he'll tell you, he'll tell you later in this interview that he's broke. So how are you giving me advice if you got less money than me? It don't make any sense. Let's continue. It's true or false. Uh, well, if you if you actually follow my channel, um, and if you've been following it from the beginning, I actually do show parts of my life, um, pretty big monumental parts of my life, but it's all obscured. Like I'll be swimming inside of my, you know, 4,000 square foot garden in Manhattan, which is almost unheard of. Uh, but I'll be doing it through night vision. So you don't necessarily see who I am. Or in my intros, I'm driving in Porsche 911. So on my community channel, I'll, I'll post what my tag is so people will see it. Or if I'm, do, you know, riding in helicopters. So people, the people that actually follow me actually do get to see my story. Um, it's just, I don't, yeah, I just don't want to disclose myself. Do they know who you are? What'd you say? Do, they, do your followers know who you are? Uh, to be honest, they probably do. They probably look me up a million times. I mean, if I'm showing my license. Then if plate, everybody already knows who you are, then. No, because I, I do it in a different way. So I'll post something and I'll delete it in like, you know, five hours or something like that. But I'm pretty sure somebody has a screen share of, you know, my Porsche 911 with the, the license plate that says whatever it says. I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, it, but am I trying to forcefully put that out there? But here's another thing that I want to bring up. Um, I come from, um, I come from a different lifestyle. You know, I come from an area where not many people make it out. Uh, so my outlook on life is a little bit different. Yeah, that's every. Life. That's every area. <laughs> well, that's true too. Um, and my outlook on things is is very different. You know, from the things that I've seen in my childhood, and I'm just very confident in myself that. I don't care about what anybody else thinks. My material is just really just to display my life. And the reason why I'm displaying my life and the reason why I'm telling people these things. And, you know, when I first started doing real estate, 
YouTube is where I came. Google is where I came. When I wanted to learn about women, you know, this is where I came. I've even seen a lot of your content, you know, and highly, highly respected for it. I, I like a lot of your content. Um, but again, I am nothing more than just an individual that is showing his life. Okay. Well, I got your backstory and it's not really my business who you are or whether you choose to show your face or not, or to check out your, your backstory to know if you're actually a millionaire. I don't really care about that. Honestly. Uh, I just wanted to get kind of the purview of what it is that we're discussing. So what sure. Speakeasy let me know was that you had some rather controversial views about male female dynamics. And I was hoping we could get into that. Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. So um, maybe you can give me an overview of what those are. And then also, do you teach these things to men? Is that part of what you're doing or? Uh, not really. I just tell people these are my personal views. I mean, take it for whatever you want it. If you want to believe it, you can. If not, then don't. Um, I don't really preach anything to anybody. Okay. So again, I don't preach anything to any of you guys. I just tell you how I live life. I look at I look at what I do as art. And when you're looking at art, it's in the, the eye of the beholder. Whoever's looking at it. Some people might say the bitch from Mona Lisa is ugly. Some people might say from this angle, she looks fucking amazing. So, you know, my job is not to lead you guys anywhere. My job is to let you know what I've done to get where I'm at from nothing. And that makes me validated anywhere. That's why I have friends at the, at the highest of the highest, because they respect where I come from. It is very difficult to do something on your own 100% and to get to the level that I'm at. So the only thing I'm doing is showcasing my life and telling you what I don't like, what I do like. Because it's important to see somebody at a, at a space that, that you want to be at. If I want to be a billionaire, I'm going to study that billionaire. I'm going to see how that billionaire operates. He doesn't, the billionaire doesn't have to tell me, listen, you need to do A, B, C, D. The billionaire just has to say, this is what I do. And that's all my content is. This is what the fuck I do. I'm doing this at the leisure inside of my office, in front of my fucking garden. I'm not leaving anybody anywhere. People might come, you know, somebody might say, hey, look, I don't, I don't like this or that about your material. That's fine because my material is art. My material is art. It is for the interpretation of the end user. Stop trying to make me this, this moral leader. I am not that. I am an artist. And that's what differentiates my material from everybody else's material. Everybody else wants to tell you what to do. I don't want to do that. I want to show you what the fuck I'm doing. I want to show you how the fuck I live. I want to show you how I got all of this 57 properties from real estate, from, from, from holding true to what the fuck I think. That's it. I might tell you you should do this or, or maybe you shouldn't do that. But all of that boils down to what the fuck I do. I don't tell you guys anything that I don't do. And that is the differentiating factor between me and everybody else. These fresh and fit motherfuckers, they tell you shit that they don't do. They buy pussy. I don't. They pay for these bitches. I don't. Does that mean that I don't respect them on you know, a business standpoint? No. But bitch, don't compare me. Me and you are not the fucking same. Me and you are not the fucking same at all. None of these YouTubers. I am one of one. Millionaire Bachelor is one of one and probably less, less than point oh 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 one of the fucking population. Okay? Don't get it fucked up. I'm respected in every city that I'm at. Why? Because of how I carry myself. I don't take shit from nobody. I'm not disrespectful, disrespectful to anybody, but I don't take shit from nobody because don't know, nobody signs my motherfucking check. I haven't had anybody sign my check outside of if I'm doing consulting for somebody and I'm selling my business services, but I mean like a W-2. I haven't had a motherfucking W-2 in over 10 to 15 years, okay? So let's get that started. What the fuck do these people think? I'm just, I'm hanging out at another millionaire's house? What the, like, come on, think about it. You just look at, just look at this fucking window. Look at the window. 
When you have windows like this, motherfucker, that means it leads to a balcony. Nigga, you, you uh, excuse my language, you have a personal balcony. That This shit ain't cheap. You think this shit is cheap? And then he goes into these, uh, these other rambles. Listen, let me tell you something. Even if I rented a personal space in Manhattan, the space that I show you guys, that would cost more than me buying it. Let's just get this shit straight. And again, we're going to read all the comments at the end, um, but I want to go through all of this stuff. And also, just to let you, you guys know, no, I'm not upset with Andrew. I mean, it, 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 this is, this is uh, how the internet works, okay? So there's no emotions. When you're dealing with business, you don't have any emotions. I might get animated, but it doesn't, like, I, I don't think either way about this, this shit. I'm, I'm telling you. After this, I'm probably going to go for a fucking swim in my pool. Like, I do not think either way about what Andrew is saying. But for the sake of content, I have to get animated because I have to illustrate the points that I have. So what are these views that you have? Um, well, I think that women are inferior for sure. You know, I think in every metrics, women really don't um, can't stack up to a man. And the reason why I bring that up is because I think there's just an overabundance of confidence when it comes to the area of, of the women, you know, to the point where the common man is not even respected. And you have people, I actually saw the clip with you and the woman that was fuck, freaking 300 pounds who thinks she's an eight. And I'm, you know, here to, to really honestly set the record straight. You know, I don't think that you're not human but I do honestly, I respect the fact that you are inferior to me. Okay, so sure. I would, I'll grant that men and women have a distinct ontology. Their state of being, in other words, is completely different from one another. Um, and there's biological metrics for why. But I'm not sure on this inferior thing. When you say inferior, maybe you can tell me what that means. What does it mean that they're inferior to you? I mean, women are childlike. You know, they're, they're ruled by their emotions. Hold on one second, one second. We're gonna get back to that, but I wanna I wanna show you the TV show where he was on, where this woman was literally three hundred pounds and saying that she was uh, a ten. So let me let me get to that real quick. All right, hold on. Let me see if it pulls up. All right, here we go. Sir, and I guess. Humble. That's, that's huh? I've heard men have more self-esteem issues than women do. Mm. Yeah. A five. I give myself a five. So wait, eight, eight point five, ten, seven. <laughs> Proud of you, Andrew. Yeah. It's a good. I'm a five. I give myself a five. So wait, eight, eight point five. Ever not. Uh, I'd say seven point five, eight, four. Is that go ahead? Eight. So eight point five. Eight. Eight point five. I'm a 10. Okay. So you, you guys understand what I'm saying in terms of women just have this over, uh, over sense of entitlement. Even on the show that he was featured on, even on the show that he was featured on, a woman said she was a 10. So I'm literally proving myself right because I'm, I'm referencing even the show that he was on. The bitch said she was an a 8. The bitch look like she ate someone. We're going to have to keep this all the way 100. Millionaire Bachelor's not pulling in these punches. These bitches are over entitled. They're over entitled. They are inferior. If you're, if you're telling me that a woman is conducting herself in this way, then she has to have some mental deficiency. And am I talking about just all women are just naturally inferior? Not necessarily. What I'm saying is the way that we are in the current state of environment that we're in, the women are inferior to men because that's how they behave. One more time. So then you take responsibility for everything that they do. Do I take responsibility for yeah. everything a woman does? Yeah. Uh, if I was in a situation, I guess I would have to. Yeah, you'd have to because you're infantilizing them, right? I, I'm who? You're infantilizing them. You're saying that they're childlike, oh, okay. so they don't have agency. They're less than you. They're like children. Yeah, so if, if, so if you consider women to be like children, you can't actually hold them responsible for anything, just like can't hold children responsible for anything. Don't you see that that's an absurd and untenable position? Uh, isn't that what happens in reality? 
No, it's wait, not wait, what happens okay, in reality. Okay, okay. The whole the whole point of the men of a like men's rights advocate. This guy just said that in reality, that society does not hold women accountable. He just said that. He just said that in reality, women are not held accountable. That's why when they commit a crime, they are less likely to be charged as harshly as men. So how can you tell me that the system is equal between men and women? When you look at the marriage laws, when you look at child support, when you look at alimony, there's no way that you can tell me that shit is equal. If you're on a date with a woman, she could say two seconds after the date that you did something wrong and the law is obligated to do something to arrest your ass just based on suspicion. You are innocent or excuse me, you are guilty until proven innocent. So you cannot sit here and tell me that things are not lopsided, Andrew. I mean, he's just not being honest. He's not being honest and he wants to debate just a debate. You see, is that women be held responsible for the actions wait. that they do. And we don't believe that uh, that women are not responsible for their actions because they're childlike. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, I would I would say the opposite, that women often know exactly what they're doing and just don't give a shit. And uh, same same with some men, I guess, if you want to use the what about the Mendo. But with women specifically, it seems like they don't enjoy taking responsibility, but I don't see why they shouldn't take responsibility. Yeah, so I, I think you're confusing what I'm saying. I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm given the current state. I'm not saying how things are. I'm saying in the current state, women are childlike because the system has empowered them to not really have to care, you know, not really have to grow the fuck up. And that's just the reality. You know, when you look at the, the sentences between men and women in terms of jail time, our system doesn't hold them accountable. So I'm telling men right now what's going on. Women are inferior because they're behaving that way at, on a mass level. And so let me guess, you uh, you probably want a harem, I'm guessing. A whole bunch of different women. No, I don't want a harem. I, I mean, I'll take two, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, why do you want to date children, dude? Excuse me? Well, I mean, this is a logical extension. I'm not. Oh, a kid. oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a kid. Yeah, I was about to check. I was about to check him for saying that shit. Like, do never in, in your life, you know, in, in, even though I understand what he was saying, but never in your life uh, use, a, use a statement towards me and say something about uh, you like children. Like, that's not even, I don't joke about that. That's not even funny. I got nieces, I got nephews. We don't play that game. We do not play that game. So I was about to check him because he's, you know, I get what he was saying. He was saying like metaphorically children, but don't, don't do that. You know, you got to watch what you're saying to a person like me. Um, because I don't, I don't tolerate that. I have people in letter agencies that, that literally, um, uh, that literally investigate those kind of crimes. So never, never fucking insinuate shit and watch the way that you speak. Uh, because that was about to get him checked real quick before he clarified that shit. I don't play those games. I'm not accusing you of anything. Oh, I'm just I'm oh, explaining sorry, the logical that. extension. If you're infantilizing women and saying that they're like children, then wouldn't the logical extension be that you want to date a bunch of children, uh, mentally children, not physically, but mentally? Yeah, mentally, mentally. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Um, listen, I'll be honest. I'll be the first to admit it. Um, you know, women can be a pain in the ass, but they're necessary. They were they were literally created for for men, and men were literally created for women. That doesn't sound inferior. I'm sorry. That doesn't sound like they're inferior. Well, again, I think you're confusing what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in the current state, what's going on right now, the way that they're behaving right now, they're behaving in like you, you can't, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. The, yeah. They but have but no here's the thing, the, dis the descriptors of now saying that certain sects of the population don't have to take any responsibility. So let me counter in fact with this. Of course. I would say that beautiful women or hot women don't have to take much accountability. I would say that that's true. But I think ugly women and uh, obese women. And that's a lie. That's a lie to say that obese women and ugly women have to take accountability. When we just saw on the, the show that he references. One second. Give me a second. Hold on. Wait one second. Let's see this. I mean, he, he said that ugly women have to take accountability, right? We'll start with you. We'll go around the table. Go ahead. Eight. How the fuck is that accountability? How the fuck 
is this fat bitch taking accountability? How? So he's he's literally proven himself wrong in the fucking debate because he's saying that ugly women and fat women have to take have to take accountability. Uh, where is her accountability? I kind of understand what he's saying, but yeah, I kind of don't. Especially when you were just on the podcast with a fat bitch that didn't take accountability and things like this do kind of have to take a bit of accountability. Unfortunately, when they're left 30 years old uh, with their cats, things like this, suddenly they start looking at female responsibility and they start moving over to the men's advocacy side, interestingly enough, right? Of course. So it's not that society really is, uh, or that the descriptor is that um, society holds no women responsible. It just seems like simps don't hold women responsible for it. Yes, but that's what the system is made up of. All si majority simps. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, how could it not be if essentially guys like you infantilize women and, and claim that they're they're childlike? I mean, it kind of opens the door to say, well, then we don't need to hold them responsible. Right? We don't hold bitches responsible. What the fuck doesn't he get? We don't. I am just telling you the current state. I'm telling you the current state of environment. We do not hold bitches accountable for shit. We do not. We don't hold them accountable. They're not held accountable for a fucking thing. If you really think about it, a woman can, can fucking go broke right now and find a dude to move in with tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I met a bitch a couple of years back. This bitch had hair down on her motherfucking ass. She had hair down on her ass, model type. Model type. And this bitch was couch surfing on her mom's couch. I'll tell you this, in retrospect, I might even have put that bitch in one of my houses. But I was younger and I didn't know better. Bitches have no accountability because even I would put a bad bitch inside of one of my houses. Come on, man. We gonna have to, we, we gotta be honest and realistic about this shit. Right? Because they don't know what they're doing. They're too dumb. They're too stupid. They're too whatever. We don't we can't hold them responsible. So I, that I seems like it's counterintuitive. No, I think we're missing each other. So I'm I'm not saying that like just how you had like the, the child remark and I kind of like missed that. What I'm trying to say about this, do I think that women are in, it's almost a play on of words and maybe I need to clarify and get more descriptive. The women that are running around rampant in these cities are inferior. You know, I'm not saying that the general woman is going to be inferior to a man because yes, yeah, she's counterpart to a man. I think we all should understand that. But I'm saying the current system that we have, it's really not in the man's best interest to, to really date these type of women, which is why. Yeah, I really no, I totally agree with that, that that's counterproductive to men, but I want to hold women, all of these women responsible for the thing. So he just told me that my argument was right because he said, you know what? I agree because it's counterproductive to men. Well, why would it be counterproductive to, uh, to men, Andrew? Why would it be counterproductive to men, Andrew? It's counterproductive to men because society does not hold women accountable. What the fuck? It's, it's like the way that I think is like 3D chess and 4D chess. And these people are just playing checkers. They just don't even, they don't understand it. And that's why I've been able to achieve everything that I've been able to achieve in business is because people just aren't on my level mentally. They just aren't. And this is... This is a guy, like I said, I do respect his grind, but this is a guy that does nothing but co consistently debates people. All he does is debate people. Millionaire Bachelor doesn't debate shit. I need this done. I need that done. That's why I'm able to talk with conviction because there's nobody that's going to trick me out of my position and there's nobody that's going to tell Millionaire Bachelor shit. I come from the slums. I come from, I come from, a bro listen, the reason why I keep mentioning this shit is because if you saw where I come from, maybe I might do a video of where I come from. You're going to say, you know what? You deserve everything you have because it was that bad. It was that fucking bad. And I made it out of that shit. We're talking about environments where uh, if you look at a motherfucker wrong, he wants to blow your head off. It's like that. And I made it out of that. And I have so much poison conviction. that It's unheard of for people like me to even exist. Come on, man. Things that they do. And okay. I think that I like this, that. and I think that the system should, because I, I think, think so. that morally they're just as responsible for their actions as men are, and uh, and I think that we're we're supposed to be holding them responsible for these actions. So, for instance, the way that the court system holds bias against men, toward, uh, as opposed to women, right. uh, when, when it comes to everything from custody uh, to. So again, he just admitted my point.
Why would they have bias towards men? They have bias towards men because they don't hold women accountable. What the fuck? It's like I'm going insane here. Even uh, criminal activity to basically everything in between, there's a, definitely a bias towards women, which seems to be held up um, inside of society. And I think that this is the exact ideology that, that comes from is the infantilization of saying that women are, are kid like, they're child like, they're. Uh, they're inferior things like this. Wouldn't the system then, if it deems it that, treat them like children? If a child commits a crime, they get a lesser punishment. That makes sense. If a child does something wrong, they get a lesser, uh, you know, a sort of consequence for it because you don't consider them to be rational, moral agents yet because they're children. Don't don't. But don't we want women to be rational, moral agents so that they can get the consequences for the shit they do? Yeah, I mean, I would happen to agree with you on that. However, again, me saying that women are inferior, I'm talking about the system that is created that you don't like. I'm just calling it out. That's all I'm doing. Well, then the system would be inferior. I still don't see how the woman, women themselves are inferior. I think that I think that there's definitely okay, a okay. distinction and there's many things they're inferior at. Um, but I'm not sure that it. So when I'm talking about inferior in this sense, I'm talking about moral agency. Or moral capacity. So I oh, think that oh. women are capable of moral decision making as men are, and they're just not held accountable very often for that moral decision making. That's bad. Yeah, I see. I see where you're coming from, um, and I I can't disagree with that. You know, yeah. I think that if from what you're saying is basically if we don't hold them accountable and we say that they're inferior, then obviously they won't behave that way. Right. And me, and me, I'm trying to just call out what's going on. So it seems like I'm pretty much perpetuating that. And I'm only just trying yeah. to call out what's going on right now. But I'm, so he doesn't even understand what I just did. What I just did is I summarized where his disconnect with what I'm saying is. He's saying that I think that women are just born inferior. No. I'm pointing out the fact that women today are inferior. An example, 30 years ago, you might be able to find a wife, somebody that was well behaved. At the time, were they acting inferior? No. Today, are they acting inferior? Absolutely. Which almost begs the question that they are fucking inferior. If, if you're behaving a certain way, and that's the character trait that you have. I'm it's best for me to just consider you inferior as opposed to make excuses for you. I understand that the system is using women. I understand that. But I understand that women are behaving the way that they are. And again, I'm holding them accountable and he's not holding them accountable. My story has been consistent from the beginning. I am not pointing out that that uh, women are inherently born inferior i am just import uh pointing out the current state of the fucking environment that's it and that's where he's getting tripped up at and the reason why he's getting tripped up is because he's trying to trip me up and it will never happen because i am millionaire bachelor it does seem like you're perpetuating it from my end no i get it i understand that i'm you know i'm a pretty out there individual you know i sometimes i can you know clarify my words a little bit better i agree with that yeah, well, I mean, it's it's not a problem. I'm just, I'm, I mean, right now we're... Yeah, and I have to clarify my, my words a little bit better for fucking idiots and morons that don't fucking use common sense. I understand that, that I think 30,000 feet in the air. You can't be less than 1% of the population and think like everybody else. So I understand sometimes I have to dumb it down for people. But I'm millionaire bachelor and I don't dumb shit down for anybody. I'm not dumbing it down. This message is, is, is sent at a higher frequency. The frequency that I'm sending this message at is, listen, if you are an intelligent uh, individual and you understand this information, you are the person that I want to gravitate toward this message. If you are unintelligent and you cannot grasp this message, fuck off. We're having a condition of a competing worldview here. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather have it move you over to my worldview, though, right? Not ostracize you from it. So well, what I'd I, rather see what I'd rather see is if you're going to advocate instead of saying uh, women are inferior or they're like infants or, or things like this. Instead, I would I would I would say instead, no, they're they're morally 
uh, equal to men in in a moral category. And therefore, all moral decision making they make, they need to be held exactly as accountable as a man would be. Yeah, he's telling me how he would think as an individual that didn't have didn't live like I lived, doesn't have as much as I have. And I'm probably about 20, 30 years younger than him. So who should be listening to who? Should I be listening to you or should you be listening to me? I'm confused. If I'm about 20 years younger than you are, I have more than you do, and it took me less time to get it. Who should be listening to who? Who really understands the world? Who really understands the fucking world? That's what I want to know. Who understands the world? The person that's trying to tell the younger guy, this is what you need to think about the world. Okay, well, you know what? You don't know anything about the world because you don't have any fucking money. And I'm not saying that money is a, a determining factor of, you know, a person's self-worth, but it definitely is a determining factor of a person's intelligence for sure. Because there are a lot of intelligent people out here that don't make any fucking money. So are they really fucking intelligent? Absolutely fucking not. They are tunnel vision motherfuckers. So do not come on here and tell me how to fucking think. If you do not have more resources than I do, that is a, the resource gathering is, is the fucking, uh, how can I, I can say this? Like the resource gathering in the world, in America, is literally a true testament to how intelligent you are. It, it, it's a testament of, of how you're able to go around roadblocks and how you're able to achieve certain things. Do I wear this on my shoulders when I go out? No, typically I don't even tell people that I have money majority of the time. But here's the thing, my friend, it is important. It is very important. And Millionaire Bachelor has done that just from fucking using his brain. That's all I did. All I did was use my brain. I leveraged the banking system through loans, through financing. And I made millions. Everybody, start putting your, your comments in the chats because, like I said, once we get done this interview, um, I'm going to go ahead and read through the chats and we're going to proceed to the normal program. So st keep writing your comments because I'm going to read them. I'm going to read the comments and I'm going to shout you guys out. So let's go. Well, I I'll be honest, I 1000% agree with that. Um, Yes. I actually disagree with that. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. So now, so now I think we're we're kind of getting somewhere. Sure. So then, um, uh, moving from that, uh, you sure you won't take the mask off? I don't think anybody's going to care, dude. Uh, they will. <laughs> They're going to care. Uh, yeah. The three Why? Words. Why would uh, they care? Well, at my level, and I'm pretty sure you you've probably experienced this as well. Um, there's a lot of variables here. Um, and these political cities that I'm, I'm located in, um, I will be a target for sure. A thousand percent with the things that I do, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, somebody might come at me for a building permit or not allow me to do this or turn something down or give me extra fines. Um, they play dirty in the cities that I'm in, you know, and also a three letter word IRS, you know, and they can make shit up, figure things out not figure things out. Um, it's real rich to tell me to take my mask off and I'm here in these liberal cities and I'm fighting and you're over there in bumblefuck where you can do that and you can be free. I can't be free as, as you are here. I will be literally a political fucking prisoner if I showed who I am. That's how, that's how blue these fucking states are. You're talking about Manhattan. They, convict, they convicted Donald Trump on some shit that didn't even make any fucking sense. They convicted Donald Trump on some shit that did not make any fucking sense. For the first time in 200 years, they turned a misdemeanor into a felony. For the motherfucker that was running, running for office, and you want me as a, as a person that's never ran for office to show my face? Man, something's wrong with these people, man. Um, it becomes dangerous for me. Yeah, but I mean, if you were saying things which were really affecting change, uh, it's not like having the mask on would prevent any three-letter government agency from figuring out who the fuck you are. How am I not saying things that are uh, affecting change? How am I not saying things that are affecting change? I'm a multi-fucking millionaire that literally is teaching other men through my own personal story how to make money. How the fuck am I not affecting change?
when most majority of individuals don't have money. Somebody can listen to my message and say, you know what? Oh, shit. I only need seven thousand dollars to buy a house. That's one hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars. And I, I could wake up the minds of individuals. How am I not affecting change by saying that women are inferior? That is definitely affecting change. The, 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 the news media would love nothing more than to put my face on the newspaper and say, you know what, misogynist, arrested, and then have a quote of all the shit that I say. This guy is fucking insane. You are anyway, right? Well, well that's true. I, I guess they, they could if they wanted to. Yeah. I'll let them do the work. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So what are some of these other kind of um, controversial issues? And um, I think issues? that uh, black America, I think that they have uh, diluted their gene pool. I think that they meet incorrectly. Um, I think that the uh, meeting standards for black America is pretty backwards. Um, you know, yeah. And I do think that the intelligence level has gone down as their mating strategies have de de deteriorated. Uh, no longer is it about um, you know, getting with the best candidate. Now it's about getting with the most lit candidate or the person who has the, uh, you know, the hottest car or the fastest. The, the, mor the morals of the black community is just outright upside down. And I, I, I do believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah, but let's let's back up a little sure. bit here just so I can make sure you when you, you're you <laughs> So this this is this may be actually actually maybe we should move off of it because of uh, TOS purposes, honestly. Oh, so as you can see, Andrew is looking to uh, his right. And when he's looking to his right, he's looking at his handlers, the ones that are telling him what and what not to say. I'm going to watch this again. Let's run this back. He's looking at his handlers. When I said some real shit about the black community, he didn't he, didn't, he wanted no smoke on that because he doesn't fucking know about that shit. Watch this shit. Watch where his eyes go when I say what I say. He really wanted to talk about it, but this guy is bought and paid for, so he could not say anything. Watch this shit again. Person who has the, uh, you know, the hottest car, or the fastest, the, the, mor the morals of the black community is just outright upside down. And I, I, I do believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah, but let's, let's back up a little sure. bit here just so I can make sure. That's the first time. The first time he looked over and he shrugged. That's the first time he looked over and he shrugged because he knew that his handlers said, you know what? You don't want to talk about this because they'll kick you offline. Millionaire Bachelor doesn't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm talking about this shit. I'm talking about this shit because I'm standing 10 toes down in this motherfucker. I'm standing 10 toes down in this motherfucker. He ran from that question. I didn't run from shit. Every question he asked me, I answered that shit. He ran. Look at him. He looked to the side and he shrugged his shoulders as if to say, you know what? We might be able to talk to this, talk about this topic. Now watch this shit again. You're, when you, you're, you <laughs> so oh, this cat got the tongue, motherfucker. Cat got your tongue, motherfucker. I'm too real. I'm too raw. This is, this may be actually, actually, maybe we should move off of it because of, uh, Actually, we should pull off of this shit. No, actually, we should pull on this shit. The black people in America have diluted their gene pool because they mate with motherfuckers that don't need to be mated with. The women at the top want the people with the fast motherfucking money, the drug dealer. And that shit's been going on for 70 years. So let's talk about that shit. You burying this shit under the rug. No, we're talking about everything. There's nothing that's off limits for Millionaire Bachelor. How is this individual that got, I had 350 subscribers. How is it that I, he has over 100,000 subscribers, and I am the one that is being the motherfucker that has the balls? How? You got the voice. You got the, you, you, you have the, the crowd. You have the supporters. And you just told me, you know what? I can't be real. You know why he can't be real? Because the money that he'll lose from this, he really needs. Millionaire Bachelor doesn't need no fucking money. I don't charge you motherfuckers for shit. That's why I'm giving you this fucking raw content. Again, we got three years until they fucking cancel us. And guess what? For every three of those years, I'm going to talk about the shit that I want to fucking talk about. Because Millionaire Bachelor lives the way, lives the life that he fucking wants. And I'm not beholden to anybody. Now watch this shit after Cat got the tongue. Watch what he does again.
uh, TOS purposes, honestly. Oh, okay. I do. I did. I did want to dive into it a little bit. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, though. He looks at him again. That's the second time he looks at him. He looks at him once, shrugs. Then he says, "Oh, blah, 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 blah. cat got your motherfucking tongue." And then he looks at him again because he knows that he just got fucking gained. Motherfucker, I do this. I do this shit at a high level, motherfucker. And I know exactly what these motherfuckers are. We don't play no games. Millionaire bachelor don't back down from shit. I'm in my motherfucking palace. I'm in my palace. This motherfucker is probably in his basement. Talk trying to tell me what the fuck to do. You Are you fucking serious? This is 2024. Millionaire bachelor's riding the fucking hottest fucking cars. Fucking the hottest broads and living his fucking life. Don't you ever in your life challenge me to a motherfucking debate if you're going to run from a fucking topic. Talking about some TOS purposes. No, Nick, I'm a PIMP, bitch. I don't run from shit. I don't turn nothing down. Not a fade. Nothing. Where I come from, you meet aggression with aggression. I'm a lion and I'm poised and I'm composed about my shit. Don't ever challenge me to a debate if you can't talk about a topic. If you can't talk about a topic because you say, you know what, this is too real. This motherfucker is too thug. This motherfucker is too street. You absolutely right. And I'm so refined. I'm like a, I'm like a triple barrel Jameson motherfucker. I'm, I'm, I'm like triple barrel, bitch. That means I was distilled three times. I'm refined. These motherfuckers ain't defi- uh, refined. They, they haven't been through what I've been through. They haven't seen the things that I've seen. They haven't told the killers, fuck you, do something about it. And the killers say, I know where your mom stay. And I say to the motherfucking killer, I know where you stay, motherfucker. I'll blow your shit the fuck up. What you want to do about it? How you want to do it? Matter of fact, you said you know where my mom stay right now. Pull a gun out and put it to his fucking head. Yeah, if you haven't done that shit, you haven't been in that level of warfare, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. And then the next day, get his shit raided. Millionaire investor pays his motherfucking taxes. And this goes out to all you motherfuckers. I'm going to tell you this right now. Millionaire investor pays his tax, uh, taxes. I don't do no street shit. I end, I end street shit. So you play street shit with me, you have the, the feds, the SWAT, all fucking letter agencies at your motherfucking house. And if you're really coming, if you're really coming crazy, motherfucker, I will smoke you and get away with it. Because of how much taxes I pay in this motherfucking city. I'm not above the law, motherfucker. I am the law. Um, I think that um, Mexican families in America generally do not care about anything outside of their household. Uh, typically speaking, um, they t- do tend to be very uh, family oriented, but they don't really care about the fabric of America. Um, by which generation? You mean first generation? Um, all of them. All of they, them? Yeah, I think the first, well, first generation. But like thir- the third generation Hispanics are almost indistinguishable from a white guy, right? I, I will give you that one. I will give you that. They're one. like, they're basically indistinguishable. I mean, there's I, not I, even an accent anymore. <laughs> I will have, I have to give you that one. You're absolutely right. Um, so yeah, maybe like a uh, first or second, first or second. Yeah, for, um, well, it, so maybe, so first generation, many of them aren't even respecting the laws. So I can, I can kind of grant that, but to say that they don't feel like they have any external community duties, they're all Catholics, right? Um, well, I don't know, man. It's it's like it it gets a little bit dicey, but you know, generally speaking, I, I just don't see that they have. You know, it's not America. You know, they they still fly the Mexican flag before the American flag, and you know, sometimes yeah, like they don't the, even fly the, the American the, flag at like all. Like the fucking the leftist tards do in the left wing city. But you know, a lot of those, um, like a a lot of those things that you see inside of when you see like the hispanic flags being flown and this and that oftentimes those are the um you know second third fourth generation hispanics who are actually doing that because they're liberal progressives and they're in these kind of progressive indoctrination centers and they utilize that as a a political statement but i'm not really sure that that so it seems like 
Hispanics are trending more and more conservative inside the United States. They're trending. So my whole argument here is that, you know, the Hispanics in, in America, you know, I talk about every single race. So, you know, I don't give a fuck. I talk about every single race and I call people out. And I think that the Hispanic Americans in, in a lot of cases are really tied to only their family and don't really care about the, the general welfare of America, which is which cripples America. And he's making the claim that, yeah, well, if, you know, you were given incentives, wouldn't you do the same thing? Yeah, probably do the same thing if I was in that situation, but that does not make it right. I'm just pointing out, and this is what people get wrong. Uh, Millionaire Bachelor is just reporting what the fuck is going on, okay? I'm just reporting what's going on, and this is what's going on. I say things about white people. I say things about black people. I say things about Spanish people. I say things about Asian people. I say things about every race known to man because we have to. We have to call everything out. I just literally went on a tirade of how black people are diluting their gym, uh, gene pool. So why can't I go ahead and say what's going on in the white community? Why can't I go ahead and say what's going on in the Spanish community? Fuck that shit. I'm in America. There's nothing. There's nothing that I can't talk about. Trending more and more conservative, uh, especially if you look at places like Florida. Uh, even I think Texas will start to see that swing as well. Um, not by the first generation because they just kind of want the entitlements to come with it. They don't really even understand the political landscape. They're just like, oh, you're going to help me and my family. Okay, we'll do it. Um, but it's, it's, it's very strange to me that you kind of think that they only care about their family. Obviously they have tons of external obligations through the church, right? Yeah. I mean, not really. Like if, when you're living in the city, like New York city, I mean, they're just rampantly taking advantage of the system. And, and also, you know, me being in like the whole Airbnb space, um, early on, probably about 10 years ago, I got to see it firsthand. You know, a lot of my cleaners had access cards. Um, you know, when I first started in Philadelphia an access card is welfare. Uh, when I was working in healthcare, um, I would, I would often see a, a name and, you know, uh, see where they were from. And I would, you know, bring it up to my manager at the time. And I'll say, wait, how are they getting Medicare and Medicaid if they're not citizens? And why are they like two years old? Like what's going on? They, they, yeah. But know, they, let's let us for a moment, sure. um, displace you from where you're at. Mm -hmm. We're going to assume for a second that you're a Hispanic illegal immigrant, right? So you look at the landscape and your government inside of Mexico is offering you incentives to cross the border. Like right. they did this, they did this during the lockdowns, for instance, they were like, Hey, if you, if you go across the border, you can actually qualify for all this relief <laughs> funding from the right. But they actually incentivize people to go across the border, right? They incentivize it every which way they can. So this guy's whole shtick is just to argue to argue while he's making some valid points. It's like the points that he are, he's making is literally pointing in the directions that I'm making, but he's trying to find little sub subtleties to, to kind of prove me wrong. That's disingenuous arguing. That's a disingenuous debate. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or am I wrong? What I'm saying is completely right, but he's trying to say, well, if you look at it this way, and I'm looking at it that way as well, but the general overarching theme still remains. People are taking advantage of the fucking American system and they're doing it through welfare. People come over to this country, they have children, and then through the children, they're getting, you know, government, you know, government, uh, what is it, government welfare and government handouts. You can. So you go across the border, right? And all these entitlements are available to you that were not available to you in Mexico. From their perspective, wouldn't you, wouldn't you take advantage of them? Of course. Yeah. But it doesn't make it right. Well, I mean, what? Again. Just because you can do some shit, it doesn't make it right. He's saying, he's saying, well, wouldn't you do the same thing if you were in their position? Probably. If I was poor and they're giving out government money in America, yeah, I'll probably take advantage of it. But guess what? It doesn't make it right. But what's wrong about it if that's the law of the land? From their perspective, they're just following the law of the land, right? But it's, it's not the law of the land. It's not the law of the land that you can cross over into somebody's uh, border. It's not the law of the land. What's happening right now is the people are turning a blind eye. The people that are in charge are turning a blind eye. That's not the same thing as that. that's the law of the land. The law of the land says that in order to stay in America for a particular period of time, you have to have a visa. You have to have citizenship. That is the law of the land. 
Now, people turning a blind eye to the law of the land, that's something totally different. So again, this is a disingenuous argument. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're talking about it from a lib lib uh, liberal perspective, I'm not saying you're a liberal, but if yeah, you're yeah, talking from about the progressive it, perspective, yeah. Yeah, if you're looking at it from the, through the progressive perspective, then yeah. We, he even tries to cl he even tries to clarify liberal and progressive. Like, come on, man, you're just looking at shit to correct. You're looking at shit to correct. Yeah, you're spot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just I think I, I think when I think about these issues, this is why I think we needed a wall. And why it is that we need to have a why would you need a wall, Andrew? Why would you need a wall, Andrew? If people weren't taking advantage of the system, why would you need a wall? If people weren't going to come over the border and take advantage of the situation, why would you need a wall? This motherfucker keeps consistently proving my motherfucking points. And I'm just poised about it because, listen, I had people like that that worked for me. They eventually got fired. But what I do with people like that is I don't even talk to them. I have my management talk to them because I'm 30, 30 feet in the fucking air. You think you know it all? Go talk to another person who thinks he knows it all. Complete total moratorium on immigration. That's why in this argument, a lot of the times I don't even engage because the, the, the mental level is not even there. And when he ran from that question, come on, man. Um, yeah, I agree. It's for exactly this reason is because of uh, displacement, which happens inside the United States. But I don't actually for the most part, blame the illegals coming in. If I was in their situation and was offered all of these incentives, I'd fucking do it too. <laughs> yeah, right? no, no, no. I, I get that. And I understand you, uh, what you're saying, Andrew. Um, and you're, you're absolutely right. You know, they're doing what they're supposed to, you know, what they're not supposed to do, but they're doing what was, you know, broadcast. To them. So let me get this straight. He's saying that women have agency to make moral decisions and they should be held accountable. But in the same token, He's saying that immigrants, which also have women inside of their population, should not be held accountable because they're just doing what they know that they can get away with. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense to me. I mean, everybody in the chat, I hope you're watching this shit and make it make sense to me because I'm mopping the floor with this motherfucking guy. I'm mopping the floor with him. I'm easing him into the conversation, making him think that he's winning and I'm letting him speak because that's what you do to a moron. Them. But however, um, it just puts a strain on America. And, I, you know, I have to bring that up. You know, I have to talk about it. Yeah, it does. Well, it's not fair to our citizens at all. No, that's no. fucking I mean, awful. It's, 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 it's awful what's going on, but it's our elected leadership fucking doing it. I mean, we, we do it to ourselves because we're insane. Right. We're the only we're the only nation that, that allows uh, essentially an open border with a nation to the south of us, which is insane. So, uh, but anyway, uh, off that topic, because I think we got agreement there too. What's kind of the next, next controversial take you've got? Uh, I don't really think I have too many controversial takes. You know, I think that, um, men should really prioritize, um, but maybe me and you might differ on this one. Um, I think that men should prioritize, you know, um, achieving more, um, in, if you're in a major city, not necessarily focusing too much on relationships because, you know, you're surrounded by individuals that will kind of distract you from achieving your goals. Um, you might, I don't know, you know, from your perspective, you might want the, the man to also take that um, as serious as uh, reaching their goals. But I know me personally, I mean, there was just so many women that were around, you know, through other friends and, they kind of just distract, try to distract me, but they could never do it because I was too focused. Um, I think that men have an, an issue right now with focus. They're not focused at all. And they're not focused because of what's going on with the women. You know, the women are sleeping with all the Chads, all the Tyrones. And, you know, I might even be considered one of the Chads and Tyrones. I got the money. I'm six, uh, six foot two uh, driving sports cars. Um, but I'm calling the shit out, too, because even at my level, it gets kind of fucking insane and ridiculous, you know? And so these, these let me ask you a question. Do you sleep with a lot of women? I used to, you know, about, I would say like a year and a half ago, I was sleeping with probably like one, one chick every other day, maybe, you know, well, what do you do now? Uh, you know, now it's more so, you know, I really, I, I really value my space and my time. So if a woman is in my space and in my time, you know, even if we sleep together, that that genuinely means or generally means that I want to see that woman again. 
in a romantic fashion or okay. so you don't see any any kind of moral issue then with um with promiscuity from men to women um there is an issue with that of course then why are you engaging in it i'm not i just told you that i don't sleep with as many women and i'm as many with... as many meaning how many i mean now it's maybe like you know one chick per week okay that's pretty promiscuous right <laughs> That's 52 women a year. Right? It is, Andrew. You caught me. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, me. Pretty, that's pretty promiscuous, right? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty promiscuous. So the thing is, is let me ask you a question. Do you think that every time a woman sleeps with a new man, it lowers her value and virtue to other men? Of course. Then why are you doing that to them? Well, it... It's not that I'm doing that to sleep with other women. I actually want to take things seriously with these women that I'm sleeping with, but it's just Why, well, every week. You want to take it seriously every week with a new woman? What? Wait, we didn't say that sound like you're trying to we take it seriously. New. We didn't say new. Some are recycled. Well, then that's not one woman a week. That's uh, you know. Oh, I thought you meant like how much sex am I having per week? My bad. Yeah, um, how many different women are you sleeping with per year? Oh, um. Not not fifty two. I mean, come on, give me give me like a good twenty. Twenty five. Yeah, about twenty. Okay, so twenty. I mean, so the thing is, though, is that every single time. So this is my kind of argument here that I can't get past, and I've been trying to. Maybe you can help me out. If every time you sleep with a new woman, right, you know that you're not going to commit to her, and that that's going to devalue her for the next guy, then aren't you doing something wrong? Um. Can she be saved? Well, I don't know what that means. Some women are just beyond being saved. I mean, you know, some women are just, that's just what they do. You know, this guy wants me to sit up there and save these hoes. I can't save these hoes. How, who am I to save these hoes? If the bitch wants some dick and I got some dick available and this, I had a stressful week, I'm going a, I'm, I'm to a bust that nut. And he's talking about, well, from a moral perspective, we don't live in a moral world anymore, Andrew. We don't live in a moral world anymore, Andrew. Oh, they all aren't even the same race. Um, Sal's, we're, we'll get into that, Sal's. Good question. Good question, everybody. Um, but back to what I was saying. These motherfuckers want me to be the moral high ground. Like, I'm not the moral high ground. I can't save a hoe from being a hoe. The Lord put hoes on the earth for a reason, and that's to, that's to fuck them. And is it in a perfect world? Is it what I would probably be doing in the perfect world? No, but this is not a fucking perfect world. This is not a fucking perfect world. Let's keep going. Yeah, but don't uh, you think that... But, Sal's, we'll, we'll get to your question, uh, Sal's. We see you, and we acknowledge you. We'll get to your question, okay? Great. Everybody also put something in the chat, because once we get done with this, I don't think we have too much longer of this. I'm going to go into my little rant, and then I'm going to read everybody's comments, and we'll have a, um, a, a roundtable discussion. That men and women look at the idea of sexual dynamics differently. So Yeah, completely. A woman, so yeah, a woman, a woman thinks... If a man is promiscuous and I'm promiscuous, we're equally yoked. And that's not actually true, right? So yeah, we value, I agree with that. Yeah, we value in women chastity, right? Yeah, we do. We do. And and they don't value chastity in us, right? I would happen to agree with that, yeah. Yeah. So if that's true and we value chastity and and they don't value chastity, then from their perspective, they also think you don't value chastity. Yeah. I mean, uh, and and you know what? This is where we're going to disagree, and I do agree with your point, but I'll be honest, Andrew, I've worked hard to get where I'm at, and... I mean, harder than a plumber? Well, I've done plumbing before. Yeah, no, but harder than a plumber? Well, I've done that before, and, and probably, yeah. Harder than a welder? Harder than an electrician? I know harder how to than a construction I, worker? I, do, I know how to do electrician as, electricity as well. You know how to do electrical work? I taught myself. Yeah. How many wires are on a 110 line? Uh, with the, with the outlet? I can tell you how to do an outlet for yeah, sure. Yeah, let's, let's talk about an outlet. How many wires? 
there are three i believe it's three yeah what colors are they uh usually black white and red sometimes red depends on the, the, how old the system is okay he says i'm wrong so let's let's take let's let's look at it Black, white, and red. Are you red. sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Yes, a thousand red. percent. Look it up, Andrew. Look it up. Look it up. It's definitely Look, red. When it's definitely dealing, red. Well, when you're dealing with the older system, like I'll put it to you this way: I rewired uh, my house in Washington D.C., and a lot of those they they were they were red. Yeah. How much? How much? You're a millionaire, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make some easy money? No, I'm already a millionaire. Oh, because oh, I, oh I you, can... mean, you mean like, okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah, it's sure. super easy money. If you take a flathead screwdriver, you pan your camera over to an outlet and you pull it out and it's black, white, and red, I'll send you 300 bucks right now. But if you lose, you have to send 300 to me. Well, this house is not the one in, that's in D.C., So I know for a fact that this is not going to be red. I know for a fact that this one's not going to be red. What color is it going to be? Uh, black, white. And? Are you getting at yellow? But I don't. I didn't see yellow in there. Yellow? <laughs> like, oh, oh, you mean green, green. Green, uh, dude, come on. My bad, my bad. I see what you're saying. But okay. I, I'm telling you, it was a red in that motherfucker. <clears throat> it's definitely they can't
can, it can be. It's it's rare though. I I have I haven't really seen red ever, but that's okay. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just curious. I was just curious, bro. Yeah, I, and I taught myself how to do that from fucking YouTube videos and all types of shit. Yeah. What about um? What about two twenty? Two twenty lines, like uh, for like washers and dryers. No, I n- I never got into that. I'll be honest with you. No. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, my knowledge for like uh electrical work is like basic to like fucking uh, ceiling fans, lights, rewiring lights, uh. Uh, electrical outlets. I do stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah, not the big boy shit. Gotcha. All right. I, I was just, I was just, uh, I was just curious. You know, obviously people can say a lot of what they want, but I can tell you this. Um, uh, it appears from my standpoint, likely not a master electrician or a journeyman electrician. I would guess that electricians, um, having worked electrical quite a bit myself, uh, that's really fucking hard work. So I'm not, I'm not really sure that you're working harder than them. So when you, th- the reason, reason i bring this up is because it seems like it's a cop out to say that well i can do this because i work really hard to get where i'm at it's like but kind of everybody works really hard to get where they're at even if they don't become a millionaire with a bugatti right well okay so let me let me if i can elaborate um i don't know it's almost like when you're when you're chasing uh success or you're, you're trying to make money like Majority of the time you're in these major city, nobody, nobody looks your way. Right. And once you start to make money and you get to that level, everybody's looking your way. Yeah. So, well, just so you know, in the future too, I'll give you a little, a little thing to remember if you're ever working on an outlet again. Sure. Right. Uh, th- the way that I always thought of it is the way I was taught the very first time was that the blacks and whites are always fighting and the greens stay neutral. <laughs> oh, you know what my, you know what my dad told me? <laughs> my dad taught me that the black is usually less than the white man, so the black is uh, wired to the smaller, smaller part. What do you say about the greens? He didn't say anything about the greens. He didn't say anything about the greens, bastard. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, no. He just told me about the black and the white. But it, okay. it was funny. I mean, he obviously doesn't mean that, but that was just a way to remember that the black chord goes to the smaller one. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, I mean, no problem there. So, um, you know, anyway, kind of moving over uh, from that, I still want to get back to this idea of, uh, of promiscuity and why you think that it's kind of okay for you to be promiscuous. Why do you think that that's a good thing? So, like I said, you know, in a perfect world, me sleeping with a lot of women, will I have to agree with you that it's not right? Yeah, I will in a perfect world. But in my situation, um, I've always been an attractive guy. Haven't always been tall, um, but I've always been an attractive guy. Kind of hit a growth spur. Um, and girls just weren't checking for me. You know, even though I was an attractive guy, it was either, you know, you were an athlete or, you know, some type of famous guy. So when I became that famous guy, you know, from how I drove my car, well, how, the cars, the type of cars I had, the prowess that I had, it, I don't know. I said, you know, fuck that. I had to wait this whole entire time for anybody to even check for me, even though I've always had the credentials. So, yeah, I want to fuck chicks because I've never had access to do it. So not do you, access to do it. Why do you have a video on your uh, on your YouTube trashing Myron Gaines? Well, I'm trashing Myron Gaines because, well, I was. It was a long time ago. But the my problem with Myron Gaines um, comes from his take on, you know, just like black uh, black affairs, if you will. I've never disclosed my race and no, I'm not actually particularly black myself, but um, I'm not uh, too keen on him escaping the realities that actually did happen to black Americans. I think that black Americans right now, they contribute to a lot of nonsense, but I think as a federal agent, And he should understand that when the FBI, the CIA, funneled drugs into these major cities through liberal agendas and destroyed the black family, I think that you should also, you know, mention that as having a, a person on a you know big platform. Yes, they're idiots now, of course, a lot of them. But at the same time, you do have to acknowledge somewhat why they're like that. And I think that he's desensitized. Yeah, he does. He has talked about that. Not really. I mean, really? all right, give me an example. What did he say? He's said multiple times that the CIA funneled drugs into uh, the United States and that there was a crack epidemic, which was pushed by the CIA. Yeah, but he also got on camera and, you know, put on a KKK mask and gave a Nazi salute. And As a like, joke. Okay, cool. I mean, I understand that. that this, that's a joke. I, I get that. But it seems He that also makes fun of Chinese people.
at this stage. Uh, sorry, gentlemen. Um, my refreshing my page three times and it's still glitching out like for one minute, then stops and glitches. No, I don't think it was a glitch. But anyway, like I'm saying, um, you can't sit up there and talk shit about fucking black Americans if you're here because of black Americans. Let me see. Can you guys see now? Hold on, let me see something. Remove. Uh. People. He makes fun of Hispanic people. He makes yeah, fun of I black people. Too. He makes fun okay. of white people. Listen, listen, don't, don't, Andrew. By the way, I want, you, I want you to remember in American History X, there was a scene where the black guy in prison grabbed a piece of the laundry and put it on like it was a KKK hat to mock the uh, Nazi in the in in the prison with him, right? So I mean, but what a scumbag for doing that, yeah? So, or no? So, so I, I also want to say, I also want to preface this with saying. I, I do have a lot of respect for Myron and what Fresh were able to accomplish. Like the commentary that I had on for, um, Myron was just my only gripe with him. But in that video, I also said these guys pioneered the the I, I guess the Internet talk show reality and everybody's copying them. They pioneered that. I witnessed it. I watched it. So well, he know, also puts his face behind his claims. Oh, uh, his face. Yeah, Myron. He puts his face behind his claims. Yeah, that's fine. He can do that. I mean, if, if that's... Yeah, but that's know, respectable, right? No, it's not. I mean, if it's I'm looking not? at... It, de it depends on how you're looking at this. I'm an artist. I'm a fucking artist. This is how... What does that I have to do with anything? Because I'm about Most to Most artists it. don't wear masks. <laughs> well, I'm about to explain it if you allow me to. Sure. You know, I, I look at my artwork like Banksy, you know, an individual that... Uh, that has a, a persona that's bigger than life and you don't generally know who Banksy is. You know, I look at it like an art form and that was my angle into YouTube. And I don't think that my angle is wrong. You know, of course, if I want to be an artist and I want to be anonymous, let me fucking be anonymous. Who cares? Yeah, but that's not my point, really. My point isn't whether or not you can or can't be anonymous. You can be. Sure. My point is, is that it seems like it's really easy though to criticize a guy like myron who is a multimillionaire and is a pioneer in his genre whether you like him or not i was a millionaire before he was so, but so for, okay, yeah. well but there's no way to actually verify that so see there like, actually is if you were one of my followers you would see that yeah Yeah, but I mean, that that's still, you know, you, that's kind of a claim, but it's not really backing anything up. So the thing is, what I'm saying is that Myron puts his face by his name. You could have been a millionaire long before Myron, for all I know. Maybe maybe that's completely correct. But the thing is, is that with Myron, it has to be verified. It always seems like it's really easy for people who are anonymous to kind of make these grandiose claims and also make these grandiose attacks on other people when they themselves have to suffer no scrutiny at all. Okay. So again, I've never attacked Myron. I literally just spoke. You about just attacked him while we were talking. Could you just give me a second? I never attacked him completely without saying like, okay, this is what I like about Myron. This is what I don't like about him. People will look at my material and say, this is what I like about him. This is what I don't like about him. Why is everybody, why is anybody above criticism? If I look at your commentary. It seems like I, you want to be above criticism. No, I don't. Well, then why don't you take off your mask? It's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Oh, it's People deeper than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People know me. I'm, I'm tapped in. People know him different. too. Uh, 
Yeah, we we probably know a lot of the same people. I'll yeah, put it that way. People people know him too. No, He's no, a no, target no. too. To except except Listen. he does it he does it Listen without a mask saying, on his Andrew. face. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm we probably know a lot of the same people. I mean, but maybe you know none of the same people. It's impossible for us. to know because you'll never suffer the same kind of scrutiny that Gaines is is suffering because you're anonymous and he is not that's my entire point so it seems like it's really easy to make a criticism against Myron when you yourself are anonymous it seems like that's the easiest way to make a criticism well that's that's my that's why I did it (laughs) right that's why you did it yeah because then you can criticize without yourself being criticized Partially. Yeah, why not? Yeah, but I mean, the, isn't that kind of uh, low-tier scumbag behavior? No, not really. I don't I don't view it that way. No? No. You don't you don't think that remaining anonymous so that you can criticize why somebody else is doing uh, A, B, and C incorrectly as opposed to you who would do things correctly, however, there's... 